and welcome to the GMBN Tech Show. Coming up this week, we look at the new edit on that airdrop edit. <laughs> and we've got the new white 2024 range. Yeah, and 27.5 is dead. Uh, well, not. according to Kotick, it is. Sorry, it's not dead. Okay, today's topic is 3D printing or additive manufacturing to use its proper name. And we're wondering if it is a fad or the future for mountain biking. So I caught up with a little expert uh, outside Brendan earlier today. So check this out. Brendan, thank you so much for joining the tech show today. Um, thank tell you for everyone, having me. Oh, no problem. <laughs> Anyone who doesn't know who you are, who is Brendan? What do you do? <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of people who don't know who I am. I am a maker and a mountain biker and um, I uh, focus on all sorts of weird futuristic engaging product designs for the out outdoor industry and especially mountain biking. Yeah you've pretty much cut a really nichey niche haven't you a bit about being a sort of a 3d printing mountain biking comedian influencer. <laughs> I've definitely cut a nichey <laughs> niche. The, um, now when I uh, collaborate with people I often see the word influencer on the uh, contract and uh, that seems a little weird but uh, yeah I guess that's where I am these days and uh, I've got to say a big part of why I follow you is the sort of the fun in the 3d printing or the I should use the proper term additive manufacturing so what's your background in that well I started as an enthusiast uh, prior to doing my channel uh, I was an engineer mechanical engineer I, I was a machinist for a long time so I love any sort of machine that I can use to fabricate stuff and uh, uh, the 3D printer is just another tool in my tool belt. So, um, and it's one that's uh, thankfully so accessible these days and getting better all the time. Um, so, I it's it's one of those things where when you want to do three short videos a week, the 3D printer is kind of the answer to um, satisfying those prototyping needs. So, what's your setup at home? What have you got? I have a I have two printers right now: a Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, which is sort of like become the standard for good quality at-home printing with multi-materials including filaments with carbon fiber in them and high temp like nylon and making durable finished parts. And then I have another printer that's an Anchor Make, which is um, also a speedy little printer, but it's not uh, enclosed. So that one is kind of, uh, if I want to do time lapses or print something out of like a basic filament, but get a cool video of it printing, I'll often use that one because it's an open printer. Your style is you've got so many fun things that you're inventing has there been anything you've actually gone actually that's a legit good idea this might actually go somewhere oh yeah so i find that kind of towing the line between um ridiculous and viable uh <laughs> is sort of the those are sort of the things that become the most popular uh lately that was um my 3d printed tires and uh while they do have a lot of rolling resistance so they're not the most enjoyable thing to ride around on uh i feel like it could be a great option for somebody who maybe had a maybe had a shop bike or something they used to get around a warehouse or they go two miles down the road to work every day and they constantly get a flat tire and there's obviously there's a few um bike brands that are using additive manufacturing seriously like for example Aston's printing lugs you've got uh, pivot and specialized creating uh concept bikes or sort of prototypes i should say um to be raced on um and only for as far as i'm aware only revel have actually manufactured a full frame um from a firmer plastic and uh, carbon fiber, I believe. Do you think that that is going to be a viable future pathway, if you will? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think with the Atherton bikes, the only thing that's stopping them from printing the whole frame, actually, I don't think there's anything stopping them from printing the whole frame. I think they're just achieving the characteristics they desire in terms of weight and, and, and flex with the titanium lugs and carbon tube combo. Um, but those machines that they're using are the same ones used uh, in the space industry here in LA and they're printing, you know, titanium rocket engines the size of a the size of a room so um, 
yeah, I don't think there's anything stopping them from printing a full full titanium frame. Uh, just maybe not what they're looking for at the moment. Is there any knowledge that you have outside of the mountain biking industry, maybe another industry that makes you think, actually, mountain biking industry is way behind when it comes to additive manufacturing? I think there's companies like Atherton that are on pretty close to the cutting edge or as much as they need to be for their purposes. You know, the, the machines that are printing large titanium objects are, are really expensive. And I think that's probably what's holding up most of the mountain bike industry uh, is a, an injection of cash to upgrade um, manufacturing facilities. But it is really cool to see a lot of companies bringing that prototyping process back home into their own facilities. And uh, yeah, excited to see what the, what the future brings there. I mean, it's really cool to see more titanium parts being made with 3D printing just because titanium is a very difficult metal to machine. And um, I remember the first time I ever made metal shavings was on, was on an old, a 50-year-old Bridgeport CNC machine. And uh, cutting titanium was an absolute nightmare. So it's really cool to be able to make intricate parts, complex parts, without a lot of waste and without a uh, you know, danger to the operator and without a lot of headaches. Yeah, I hadn't thought about it like that because obviously people like Moots have been manufacturing dropouts because they're quite complicated for their tie frames. And I just come back from Bespoke a few months ago and the independent bike brands are already uh, cold metal fusion lugs welded into tie tubes wow. and making it seamless, like as though it's carbon and it looks absolutely beautiful um and maybe the hope is that additive manufacturing would make tie affordable again maybe or just competitive yeah. with carbon perhaps yeah it's, and, it's, and it's so cool because you also you know when you're machining a complex part like that uh, on a traditional cnc machine i say traditional but that would probably be like a five axis uh crazy expensive machine but you end up you know at the end you have your part and then you have a pile of chips or a pile of shavings on the floor or whatever that are kind of waste um, but with a with a 3d printing process you know you pull your part out of the powder the titanium powder and then the rest of the powder gets reused to make the next part which is really cool so you're reducing waste there oh well brendan thank you so much for joining me i know that's brief and i could talk to you all day about this subject but um thanks for joining us and to everyone else do check out outside brendan on instagram oh thank you to outside brendan's do give him a follow on instagram and let us know down in the comments below what you think about 3d printing and whether you think it's the future it is surely Breaking news, Owen, 27.5 is dead. Really? Uh, well, according to Kotick it is. Oh. So uh, basically they've re-released their hardcore steel hardtail, the beefy, or the burly iron, the B. Effie. Anyway, is it, is it not beefy? I don't know. It's like burly iron. Anyway, uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, it is the last time that they will be doing a 27.5 wheeled front and rear uh, beefy. Uh, apparently, they're not selling so great, and although they're sad to see it go, it will be 29er from here on out. So, if you're interested in the refresh and you want it in 27.5, now is your end chance. More exciting news, this time from White as they launch their 2024 range. Um, so they've got lots of new colours, they've got a new logo. Probably more exciting is that they've got an all new e-bike called the E-Lite. And I know that's controversial, why are we mentioning e-bikes? <laughs> Get those fingers ready on the keyboards to, uh, to, to bash us about talking about e-bikes. The reason why we're talking about them is that they're, they've got a new super light one. So it runs the Bosch SX system, which is a sort of mid-power system. So it's 55 newton meters. Um, versus the 85 from the CX, um, but it's around 750 grams lighter. Obviously a bigger part of the whole package is the batteries, and these ones run slightly smaller batteries, but with range extenders, so you can kind of get a similar amount of travel, for want of a better word. But yeah, the big thing is the weight on these. So there's a number of different travels, they've got a 140 version and a 150, but both of them are around 17 kilos, which is actually really light. Lots of enduro bikes out there from quite a few other brands. Full fat enduro bikes are weighing the same. I say full fat, but pedaling ones, not e-bike ones. So yeah, interesting. 
So Airdrop have edited their edit, which is their big hitter. It's a 161 to 167 rear suspension there. And you can pair that with 160 or up to 170 mils of front suspension. It's now a mixed wheel compatible, but you can run it 27.5, which is very rare these days. So free riders will rejoice as we can see with Kotick, we're starting to lose those smaller wheels. Um, it is alloy only. They sell it with a CNC machined rocker. Um, and it's coil compatible it's definitely a big hitter and that will be available for pre-order starting at 1799 british pounds which will come with a rockshox coil ultimate shock cool next up is newt proof's dirt suit i think they have it in uppercase dirt suit so it's a bit <laughs> shouty it's really smart so it's a bit like a dirt onesie where you can wow. kind of like have you all in one but it's not so it's a little <laughs> bit better so you've got a jacket you've got trousers a bit like salopes um with rather natty braces i like the braces bet you do the cool key bit is that they zip together and you've got the effectively a bit like on a snowboard jacket i mean on snowboard jackets they're called snow skirts dirt but skirt dirt skirt there you go that's perfect <laughs> Um, so it's three layer bonded material, it should keep you exceptionally waterproof um, because the zipper is waterproof as well, very cleverly designed. Tough, durable and it's got 10,000 millimetres of waterproofing. I'm not sure what the breathability is but I feel it will be very high as well. I think it's the same. It's the yeah. same? Right, well that's, that's really excellent. £450. I mean you're getting a waterproof trousers and coat here that are, can mesh true. together. Yeah, so literally zip together, yeah. Mm. Yeah, it looks good. And it will keep you dry. So that's the main thing, I guess, in, in a horrible wet winter. Wow, Owen, what's that? Wow! <laughs> High tech computer graphics there. This is the awesome uh, Essential Mountain Bike Maintenance book. Yes. It's it, amazingly good. Yes, yeah, so it's all instructions on how to fix everything on your bike. And if you can't be bothered to read, then you can scan it and let it take you to one of our videos. So check that out in the GMBN store now and support our channel. Okay, it's quiz time. Did you know the answer to this? I didn't know. No, I didn't actually. It's, it's a bit of a curveball here. So Nolly's first ever mountain bike uh, was called the VTAC, which is actually short for variable tachycardia, I believe, which is like an abnormal heart rhythm in plain English. Right, okay. Uh, you're not the only one with random facts here. Um, and the people that got that right is Tim Sadler, regular, well done. Uh, Breakaway B, Liquid Make Hall, uh, Claremont Interiors, uh, Ron Hiking, and Nita Globy. So bagged yourself the first bunch of pride points. Well done. Well done, you. Um, and seeing as we've been talking about 3D printing, I did mention uh, Revel uh, Bikes 3D printed or additively manufactured frame, which was done with thermoplastic, not thermoset, which is what most carbon frames are produced by. But do you know the difference between thermoset and thermoplastic? Well, let me know down in the comments below. Pride points for you next week. Okay, Owen, it's bike cave time. But before I do, I just want to show you this really cool uh, thing which was sent in by um, a guy from Singapore. Uh, and it is a 3D printed uh, evil frame. It is incredible. It look, I thought it was real at first. Well, it's, you know, but you it look is closely. Real. Yeah, okay. Uh, and he's actually made it so that you can stick on Lego wheels from the sort of Lego bikes. So you can actually have your own uh, 3D printed bike, which I thought Love was really it. cool. So I just wanted to shout to you, uh, kudos as we're doing a bit of a 3D printing thing. Um, but over to the bike caves, it's time to snoop around in people's garages. Yeah. Garages. Bit of garage floor chat garage. as well. What have you, have you gone for a two-part epoxy in your garage? I'm not that rich. Uh, I've gone for okay. bare concrete and You're not sealed some it? holes in the uh, roof. That's my vibe. Okay, yeah, there you go. Bit of, um, You're gonna paint expanding it, seal it maybe? Uh, no, there will be no paint. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> maybe in the Concrete future. Concrete dust coming soon. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll start up some kind of like funding page. Um, okay, so for this one is sent in by Will, um, and he lives near Bentonville in Arkansas, and he has featured on our show before, but he's made this really cool uh, kind of rolling centerpiece where all of his, uh, it's like a rolling bike um, bench effectively that moves around the shop and it's got all of his tools lined up there and uh, I just thought it looked really neat. Yeah, we what like that think? a lot. Um, and you've been to Bentonville, haven't you? I have. Meant to be quite good trails there. They're, yeah, they're pretty good. Yeah, right, it's a lot go. of fun. Rich Payne says that they're the best trails on the planet. Really? 
Really? Really, yeah. The amount of riding he reckons is just incredible. So, yeah. It's definitely good for a shoot because they're so close by. Amazing. Um, and then my second one here is from Glenn, who uh, from the office. is from Brisbane in Australia. Oh, that's cool. Hi. We don't get many Australians um, coming in here. But uh, basically, his bike cave has grown and grown uh, so much that he's now getting the kids and the wife into it. And so they're squeezing into the bike cave too. So that's why he gets a special mention from me. Oh, um, and finally, last but not least, from Richard here, who uh, is from Wills Point in Texas. He says, uh, that basically, <laughs> just like, all he says is, too much money invested here. <laughs> I think we can all relate, yeah. can't we? Yeah, we can, definitely. Okay, last week we were rating influencers' bikes, and uh, apparently I was wrong. Um, Owen, apparently you're right, and sorry Anna, but VHS does count. There is no stipulation, Hans Ray, he reckons Hans Ray was one of the first he, he influences. He is, he's like the OG, he's I'm an awesome sure. dude. I I'm believe sure. he's got maybe talks happening next year, so if you have time, go and see them, because he is the original influencer. <laughs> Uh, and then we rated Fabio's bike, didn't we, with the white tyres. Uh, yeah. And um, Double LS says, white tyres looking amazing when they're brand new. That's yeah. It. Random mystery fact, uh, Onza, when they were a tyre and component brand, did, a, did white Porcupine tyres. They were really? a very soft compound. Mm. Effectively a bit like the compound of an, uh, like a, an eraser for pen and pencil, if anyone remembers that. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. Um, and yeah, they'd be as, as sort of grippy as that, but also wear out as quick. So mm. yeah, When I was fact. racing cyclocross, uh, the sort of turquoise tyres with the sort of Bianchi Celeste. Oh, the green the, Michelins. Yes, ah, the they Michelin were mud. the one. Yeah. Um, and then from Floyd Blansdon uh, says, uh, that original Seadale was a beast from the east uh, with 26 up front. Apparently 26 up front, 24 in the rear means it was a beast from the east. Uh, yeah. That totally bypassed me, actually. I didn't even know notice it was a mixed wheel uh, retro bike that we were looking at last week so um, uh, kudos for you uh, for letting us know um, but anyway what are we looking forward to this week Owen? we are looking forward to pro workshop tips is that you could be might be me <laughs> I'm pretty uh, sure it is <laughs> okay that's good uh, <laughs> and then on Sunday I'm doing a sort of retro versus modern kit uh, comparison but it's basically a little little walk through um, from the 80s through the 90s uh, getting a little bit reminiscent about how clothing has changed over the years and it's quite surprising how much it's flannel changed. shirts and, and jeans for the start obviously yes Excellent. that's where yeah. I start yeah um, so thank you for watching today and do jump into the comments for a debate if you fancy it about 3D printing and let me know if you've had any experience with any 3D printed parts on your mountain bike. Or if you bought an Athens. I mean that's oh, yeah. Yeah, 3D printed.